I'm going to reveal five hacks that allows you to get more out of a budget lens for wildlife photography. If you use these, your images will be so much better. And especially if you use hack number five, your images will lift to a whole new level. I have to make one thing clear. I'm not saying that we can make a $500 lens look like a $15,000 lens. That's not possible, but it doesn't mean we can't try. Oh, and uh, if you don't get the first thing right, your images will look softer than they need to. Now, because a budget lens isn't as sharp as a top-of-the-line lens, you won't be able to crop in as much. Given the same screen size or viewing size, as you crop, you will enlarge the softness as well. Your job is to get close enough so you don't have to crop as much. And this is why we need this. If someone were to ask me if you should shoot at aperture f5.6 or f8, I would say that it depends on this next tip, and it's especially important with budget lenses. This is really a magical place. Just look at this. All these mosses and everything's green. So many times I've been disappointed when I got home to the computer. I thought the photos I took were sharp, but no. You need to find the sweet spot of your lens. This is especially important with budget lenses or lenses that are not top of the line. They're more likely to have issues with sharpness in the when you shoot wide open. So you likely have to stop down a bit. Like with this 150 to 600 millimeters, it's sharpest at f8. And the difference in sharpness is huge. This goes from throwaway images, wide open sometimes, because the sharpness in the eyes of the animal I'm trying to capture is just not there. But when I stop down to F8, the images are great. But this gives another set of issues. So let's find a good spot for the height. This is actually the first place I have in mind with this fallen tree and I really love these these kind of branches I think maybe they could like in some way become part of the composition I think I'll set up the height just over here like eight meters away if it's not too wet now I just need to figure out how this looks. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish, nine meters. That could work. So I have a general idea of where to put this hide and it's actually starting to rain a bit so I better get finished and before I set it up though I want to check where the light is coming from and I'll be sitting in this hide in the morning so I know where the, I want to know where the sun is. If I'm correct the sun will come up over here and this should give us at least side lighting. It would be great with some backlighting if I'm lucky. If I go for backlighting or at least side lighting, then um, if an animal comes to this dead tree, then it would be awesome. I would get an awesome shot of whatever comes here. 
but things don't always work out the way I plan. So there's a bit of luck in this. I will put up my hide a little more to the side than what I planned. In that way, I can get a little more backlit shot. I hate fiddling with this. To make a budget lens look its best, you need to do the thing I'm about to tell you. And even more so than with a pro lens. You need to take extra care that the background you find can still work when you're shooting at f8, like I do most of the time. At f8, the depth of field will be much larger, and background that's in focus steals away attention from your subject. Make sure that you choose a background that's further away. So let's take a look at how this works for me. And let's set up. You can see the lock. Maybe, I hope so. So next to the to the fallen tree, then there's another uh, like 10, 15 meters to the nearest next object. So this should work fine for me because that'll be thrown more or less out of focus. By the way, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of this. Now I'm quite happy with this setup, but um, I'll also shoot at quite a high ISO and I don't like that, but that's, that's the issue with budget lenses. You will be shooting at a higher ISO compared to a, a high-end telephoto lens. However, there's another way where you can get so much more out of your images even though they're shot at a high ISO. You need to use software that is extremely good at handling high ISO. I personally use DxO Pure Raw or DxO Photolab. It's the best I've ever seen when it comes to handling noise. And I'll put a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. I think that's a free trial for it. Anyway, this allows you to shoot earlier just like a pro photographer with a $15,000 lens would. I don't have that, so I need to have software that handles image uh, noise or ISO noise extremely well. So I'll leave the tent here and put out a little bit of seeds, not too many because they might get wet. So I'll place some new ones early in the morning and go in the tent and see what happens. And then we'll discuss the fifth hack. This is far from the conditions that I hoped for, but with a little luck, we can get home with something anyway. You can lift your images above the rest if you just do one thing. I don't know if we can call it a hack, but it'll certainly shift the focus away from focusing so much on sharpness and getting a smooth background. Of course, don't get me wrong, your images should be sharp in the right places, but they can also be an overemphasis of sharpness. If you instead focus much more on the story you want to tell with an image and the composition and the light, then comparing that with a sharp image, which is a boring portrait of a bird and nothing else is happening, I am sure everybody will say that the one with the story, with the light, with the beautiful composition 
is the clear winner. It's so much more interesting. You don't get any easy path by using a budget lens. It'll be a little more difficult, but you'll learn so much more. For even more tips on nature photography, check out this video up here about seven hacks to improve your wildlife photography without buying new gear. So, see you over there.